How you doing everybody? Today we're taking a quick look at Godzilla Kong The New Empire. And no, I did not misspeak, the X in the title is silent. This was directed by Adam Wingard and stars Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hoddle. Kong has taken up residence in Hollow Earth, rarely coming to the surface unless he needs some dental work done. And I'm not making that up, that is actually part of the plot. And Godzilla continues to roam the surface, taking out any titans that try to start shit. This can result in significant property damage, as one might expect, but otherwise there is at least some semblance of order. But this changes when Kong discovers a previously uncharted area of Hollow Earth, with a tribe of humans closely related to Gia, played once again by Hoddle, as well as a tribe of damn dirty apes. The apes are led by the Scar King and his pet titan Shimo, and they intend on taking over the surface world and bringing about a new ice age. To stop them, Kong must enlist the aid of Godzilla, if they can get along for five minutes. Which... seems a bit odd. I thought at the end of the last movie they were cool now. Are they... not... cool now? Did I miss something? Oh well. You probably figured this from the trailers, but this is very much not like Godzilla Minus One. Minus One had a much more human-centric story with a very important message to share. This movie has no message. The human characters do not matter apart from Gia. This is all about big monsters fighting each other, and that is totally fine. Both types of Godzilla movies have their place in the world, and both are capable of greatness. Minus One was great. Godzilla Kong The New Empire, not so great. But not really bad either. There's a whole lot of big monsters fighting other big monsters, and for the most part, those battles are a lot of fun. Kong has a few fights with the Scar King and his damn dirty apes. There's an amazing moment where he grabs this younger ape named Suko and just starts beating the other grown apes with him. You ever get so mad you hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker? And Godzilla gets to fight a few titans here and there, and in the first big battle, Rome gets wrecked, because Godzilla, no respect for property. And between fights, he decides to take a nap inside the Roman Colosseum, which is a very funny visual. And eventually, Kong and Godzilla come to blows before teaming up, possibly with someone else, to take on Scar King and Shimo. I thought the scenes with Kong exploring Hollow Earth and finding the Scar King and his tribe were pretty well done. They managed to tell a good story without any dialogue, which is not easy to do. And of course, it is a huge special effects extravaganza, which looks excellent for the most part. Unfortunately, Shimo is kind of the weak link. Uh, I refer to her as Scar King's pet. Really, she's more of a slave and kept in chains, and the chains just... the way they sit on Shimo's body just don't quite look right. I think the animation there needed another pass. I don't know if they ran out of time or money or both, but it's a weak link in an otherwise excellent looking movie. In any case, if you want to see huge monsters beating the shit out of each other, this movie delivers. Good thing too, because it doesn't deliver on much else. Most of the humans in this movie are just there to get squished by the kaiju. And there's a lot of squishing going on. The only ones that aren't there to get squished are the returning characters, Dr. Eileen Andrews, Bernie, and Gia, and newcomer Trapper, played by Dan Stevens. But apart from Gia and Trapper to a lesser extent, even they don't amount to all that much. The way the humans get involved with this mess is they basically receive some sort of distress signal from Hollow Earth. Dr. Andrews and Trapper decide to journey down to Hollow Earth to investigate, and they bring along the conspiracy theory podcaster and the child for really no good reason. Dr. Andrews reluctantly brings Gia along because she can communicate with Kong, but Kong communicates using ASL. I'm pretty sure she is not the only one that can do that. Couldn't they have just had her stow away or something so they're not willingly bringing a child into this mess? That said, I like the character, I like Hoddle's performance, she is a very talented young actress, and even though I'm sure she is not the only one that could possibly communicate with Kong, I do like the unique bond that they have. And I found it interesting how she was particularly affected by the distress signal coming from Hollow Earth, which seemed to give her weird visions and hallucinations. She is basically on a quest to find her people, or what's left of them, and she's really the only human character I genuinely care about. Trapper is basically a Titan veterinarian. I don't even know how one becomes such a thing, but... There it is. And I do at least like the idea of that kind of character, and he does have a couple of cool moments where he replaces one of Kong's teeth and also helps heal his injured arm. But apart from those two moments, he doesn't do a whole lot for me. For the most part, he, Bernie, and Eileen are just there to give us breaks between monster fights, and those breaks are not all that entertaining. Overall, I liked Godzilla vs. Kong more than this. I think this movie was a step back. 
and probably a mistake to release it so close to minus one, which was phenomenal, but it is a decent popcorn flick, worth a matinee. And that's all I have to say about Godzilla Kong The New Empire. Till next time, take care.